Hello and welcome back to Curiosity Mine and welcome back to Bush Botany where once again we are travelling through the opal fields of Lightning Ridge, New South Wales, Australia with Warwick Schofield looking at some plant species that have a specific impact on the local environment and sometimes have a direct connection with the opal industry. In this episode we're looking at two cacti and one succulent all with very different roles and behaviours within the ecosystem. Have a look at this. Oh my, this is a columnar cactus. You say cactus, why am I touching it? Because these beautiful fruit have no spines whatsoever. And this may be the last time you hear from me if you're lucky. I'm gonna eat it because it's quite edible. And it's like a kiwi fruit. It looks like frog's eggs, doesn't it? Kiwi, it's a little edible seeds and white juicy content. Beautiful, nice with ice cream, cream. A bit of custard, beautiful edible columnar cactus. Look at the fruit there for the eating. No prickles or spines. Beautiful. You excuse me while I have some lunch. These are called columnar cactus because they grow in a column and they're also referred to as ceroid or serious cactus. I am serious and don't call me Shirley. There are a lot of cacti in this classification across a lot of different species. This particular one is native to Peru and it's called Sirius Peruvianus. And as you might guess from the way that it looks, it's somewhat related to dragon fruit. The fruit on Sirius Peruvianus has a crunchy texture and what is described as a sweet and floral flavor. Looks a bit like kiwi fruit, except it's red. I think the opal miners deliberately brought these here up to a hundred years ago and planted them for food and moisture. These things will survive the dry, look at that black, black trunk. It's been here for 50, 60 years, this thing. And it's growing under this rosewood tree. But I believe these were deliberately brought here as a food source for the mines. Of course, it's an introduced, you could call it weed species, but it's not invasive, it's not going to take over. It's just left here, growing like a tree with this beautiful, have, have some, come on, it's beautiful. We'll all die together. Just like kiwi, and sweet, nice with ice cream. As I'm sure I've mentioned before in these bush botany videos, please don't just eat things in the bush. Not everything that looks edible is safe to eat and there are a number of plants, both native and introduced, that are not good for your health at all. Please do your research or find yourself an expert on bush foods to take with you if you plan to explore native or introduced fruits and berries in the bush. Just to put that into perspective, here's another type of cactus that also has a red fruit that is not something you want to eat. But uh, we've got this nasty Harissia cactus here. It's an introduced species of quite concern to government when it saw that this had now arrived in Lightning Ridge. Look at the length of these spines. These are very dangerous. <coughs> they don't have the little hook on the end like the Hudson pear, but they are very dangerous. And look at the red fruit, characteristic of a lot of the cactus plants. This one has an amazing, huge white colored flower but it only opens at night and it only opens once and that's the end of it. We'll see if we can find some, here's some flowers that have already finished and there's the dead, dead flowers here. These, if fertilised, will turn into the red fruit. Harissia was introduced into Australia in the 1890s as a decorative plant and it's since spread across Queensland and across northern New South Wales. Unlike the Hudson pear, which spreads by getting its cladodes attached to animals by fierce Velcro-like spines, Harissia mostly spreads by seed, usually by birds who eat the fruit, and then they carry the seed to a new location where they leave their droppings and new Harissia grow. Harissia can spread by cladode movement, but it's not the primary means of natural propagation. If you're traveling around the opal fields, you should be checking your vehicle tires regularly for pieces of Hudson pear. So if you find any Harissia there, you should also get rid of it so that you're not contributing to its spread. Harissia fruit is edible to humans in theory, but the fruit more often than not has as many spines in it as the cactus does. So anyone who tries to eat it is likely to be pretty horribly hurt. I would not recommend. Right, so we have here, would you be pleased to know, the uh, 
giant carrion flower. So this is a uh, introduced species, a succulent plant. A stapelia is the genus. It emits a rather poor quality odour, hence the name carrion. And uh, blowflies and other carrion feeding insects will pollinate it. And we'll see it in the morning. They'll be flying around and crawling. All blowflies love the cat. Here's the vegetative part. It's just a nice succulent stem. Looks a bit like a cactus, but there's no spines on it. And uh, it spreads across as a ground cover, but quite a spectacular flower. The giant carrion flower, Stapelia. We might find a bud around here somewhere if we look. There's the bud, aha, uh -huh. here we go. This will be ready. This will probably be flowering tomorrow. Unlike the two cactus species that we've looked at, which were both from South America, the giant carrion flower is a succulent and it's native to the desert regions of southern Africa. Stapelia gigantea is not generally considered an invasive species. In fact, it's quite common to see the plant for sale in the succulent section of some garden stores, but it clearly thrives at Lightning Ridge because you'll quite often see areas with a cluster of carrion flower plants growing under every single tree and bush. So those are three examples of cactus and succulents that you'll find on the opal fields at Lightning Ridge, all introduced, all with different impacts on the ecosystem and the environment and the people. One of them introduced and edible, one of them introduced and quite vicious, and one of them quite benign, but malodorous. This video was made with the help of Warwick Schofield with support from Margaret Schofield and Kay Walderspoon. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Curiosity Mine on YouTube and following along on all of the usual social media channels. The links are down in the description. And thank you for watching.